Well, this uh, mission is in line with uh, the earlier this year published International Security Strategy, which says now the United States more or less is moving to the Pacific. Europe becomes responsible for the northern part of uh, Africa, uh, for the instability, etc. And that is the reason that now we commit troops to the uh, UN mission. Focus will be on uh, gathering intelligence and also reconnaissance activities and for that purpose we have uh, commando troops uh, in the northern part of Mali as well as four Apache helicopters we, which also have sensors which, which you can also uh, gather a lot of intelligence. Well, um, I think that uh, it, the, the reconnaissance mission, which is due to be uh, uh, deployed in the north of Mali, will face a, a very complex environment. We, we are aware that northern Mali um, emerged from um, a, a jihadist takeover in early 2013 following the French uh, military operation known as Serval. Serval is continuing. There are continuing skirmishes between armed groups uh, and uh, the Malian armed forces. There, there is uncertainty over what has happened to remnants of Al-Qaeda and other jihadist groups in northern Mali. It's very uh, instructive to know that uh, it seems that Al-Qaeda has taken responsibility for the recent murder of two French journalists in the town of, of Kidal. So it is, um, it, it, in terms of you know, uh, troops on the ground, they will face a complex situation, but they are special forces. They are aware of, these, uh, of these, this situation. That is what they are being deployed to deal with. I mean, the, the, Minusma, the Minusma has mission has various parts to it. Obviously, a, a priority area is the protection of civilians mm -hmm. and the re-establishment of peace and stability in northern Mali. That is the priority issue at the moment. Northern Mali was a conflict zone not very long ago and could revert to being a conflict zone um, if, if things are not uh, well handled. MINUSMA also has other parts to it, however. It has a part to deal with the re-establishment of um, the, uh, the Malian state in Bamako, which has suffered um, a huge amount of corrosion uh, and corruption over recent years, which accounts for the crisis which emerged towards the end of 2011. Um, and it also has to deal, obviously, uh, with the peace negotiations, which are, as it were, the third part of the puzzle. Um, how do you get the different armed groups, uh, which are not jihadists, in, uh, in northern Mali too? primarily two armed groups at the moment, to agree a solution with Bamako over the status of Northern Mali, or as they prefer to call it, as a WAD. Uh, our cabinet presents the mission as a 3D mission, so an integrated mission by defense, diplomacy and development. But in reality it's a military mission, with only military men who operate mainly in the northern part of Mali and we also have separate development projects where they are not integrated in the military mission so uh, I don't agree with the position of the cabinet that this is typically a 3D mission. But that's just a Dutch contribution or is that the mission in general you would say? And the mission in general would presents itself broadly as a 3D mission and the justification, I think Case is right on this, on this point, but the justification is that the Dutch military will be forming part of a UN mission which mm -hmm. itself is operating in, in a 3D way and also is connected with Dutch bilateral development projects. The Dutch have long been major donors to Mali, so they have got a lot of development work on the ground. So I think the mission should be less ambitious. The main priority, in my opinion, should be restore uh, stability and security in whole Mali. I think I, I'm, I'm perhaps not as, as sceptical as the merits of the, of the, of the MINUSMA mandate as, as cases, but I do believe it's, it's overly ambitious perhaps for another reason, which is that Northern Mali has got certain structural problems which will not be solved in the period of course uh, of a few years. It's a very large, 
very sparsely populated territory with extremely low levels of economic development which has traditionally had for many decades smuggling networks which were converted over the last decade or two into transnational criminal networks. Um, I do not think there are easy comprehensive solutions. Um, I think at some moment the international community and the regional partners will have to prioritise what do they want out of Northern Mali, what are they willing to accept in terms of instability or in terms of armed group presence and, and as in Afghanistan, you know, what's the, 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 the least worst solution as it were. Uh, first of all, our new defence policy is that when we take part in peace support operations, uh, we will be in the field only for a rather short period of time. We have now signed for two years, and in my opinion, next year we should already negotiate with the UN who, uh, to which country we can transfer our mission at the end of 2015. That's one remark. The other remark is about command and control. Uh, the French are more or less uh, yeah, operating separately from the UN mission, but they have said when the UN mission is in danger, when they are uh, confronted with an immediate threat, uh, then the French uh, will uh, uh, assist. But uh, that is uh, yeah, not a, it's a promise, and we had the experience on the Balkans that not always those promises become reality. So there should be a very strong guarantee that when the Dutch mission is in danger, the French should really come to uh, the assistance of the Dutch. Um, regarding this mission, it, it strikes uh, me as a very interesting, a very considerable commitment from the Dutch. We're talking about um, the, the largest Western contribution thus far to the mission at the UN mission in Mali, the second largest Western military contribution to Mali after the French. So um, really the Netherlands is putting itself in a very high profile position in a country which is at the center of a region suffering a series of, of, of risks of instability, of crime and terrorism. And, and it will be interesting to see how this evolves over the years because it's not just a question of Mali, it is a regional issue and it will be interesting to see how the Dutch, uh, the Dutch commitment uh, changes.